Welcome to Metabolism and Bioenergetics Part 2. In this tutorial, we'll look closely at the citric acid cycle. Let's get started. Alrighty. So the citric acid cycle, it's uh, pretty long, so we'll abbreviate it CAC. And Krebs was the gentleman that first um, discovered it, and so it's often referred to as the Krebs cycle. Um, this is the older name, and citric acid cycle is replacing it. And so this is a true cycle. It's a circular pathway. It's a series of biochemical reactions that are going to break down acetyl groups to create biochemical um, energy currency um, of reduced coenzymes and GTP. So this whole concept of energy currency, how does the body transport energy throughout, throughout us to get it from where we have it to where we need it? Alrighty, so we can... So we'll look at it very simply now and um, look at, so we see that we're going to have CO2 production and we're going to have reduced coenzymes. So um, the energy currency, you want to start thinking of it, I think we all know about ATP, but um, what could be new to your awareness now is the reduced coenzymes. These are all, we can all think of the, these as energy sources. So in the first two, the first two reduced coenzymes are NADH, and then we do produce some GTP. And so it's um, closely related to ATP, and so the body is able to convert that GTP into ATP. Then we get some, an FADH2 reduced coenzyme, and then one more NADH. So the real essence of um, the citric acid cycle is that we have two carbons in and we'll get two carbons out as CO2 and we get these reduced coenzymes and GTP which are the energy currency. So we'll see that the reduced coenzymes then will go on to the electron transport chain. So Let's take this um, introductory view of the citric acid cycle and connect it to the big picture, right? So now we're down here for energy production. So the, the acetyl-CoA, right? So this is the two carbons in. And then we have our citric acid cycle. So we've seen that there's the CO2 is the carbons out. And then in the diagram here, We've described it as electrons, but how do those electrons move? Well, they're transported by the reduced coenzymes, FADH2 and NADH. So um, it's a little misleading to think that the electrons are just floating around freely in our body. The, the reduced coenzymes are the transport molecules. Right, so these are the transport molecules for the electrons, okay? So, and then ultimately that leads to the electron transport chain, and then we could see oxidative, right? Because oxygen's present, and phosphorylation, because we see that we're combining the phosphate group with ADP to produce the ATP. So the names are all very descriptive and helpful in explaining what's going on. All right, so now that we have the big picture, let's um, focus our attention and look at the details more closely of the citric acid cycle. So we'll get this page centered. All righty. So let's look at the changes that are occurring. Um, so here we have it, right? So here is our acetyl-CoA entering the citric acid cycle at stage one, right? So here is that acetyl group right there. And we have um, oxaloacetate, and then the, this is citric acid right here. So that's why it gets called the citric acid cycle. So we have the enzyme citrate synthase, very well named. Alrighty, so notice the acetyl-CoA then 
will join with water to the oxaloacetate and we will get coenzyme A released back into our body to go produce more acetyl-CoA and then we have our first product here. So now we want to look at the structure so um, we can, there's quite a bit happening here. It's a, it's a pretty busy reaction, but if we look here, there we see the carboxylate and the CH2, and then this carbon here, we can see we have this carbonyl changing, and so here, here is our acetyl group. Um, hooking on to the molecule. So um, now let's look at the next step, right? So the first step is basically we have this acyl group transfer reaction. And it's um, very complicated. There are a lot more steps than what we show in the simple schematic. So we'll just focus on the fact that we have an acyl group transfer. Okay, now let's look at the changes that occur from um, the citrate to isocitrate. So if we scan the molecules and we look for differences, we'll go, hmm, there really, there is no change in the chemical formula, but if we look here, we can see that this alcohol group was a tertiary alcohol and so there's been some rearrangement of the molecule. If we look at the alcohol here, now we can see that it's a secondary alcohol. So in this second step, we simply had an isomerization of citrate to isocitrate. Let's see what happens in step three. So as we look at isocitrate, we look for changes that occur as it produces alpha ketoglutarate. And as we look here, we notice that this carboxylate group is gone. It has been released as CO2. So now we see that, um, right, we've had basically a oxidation. We've fully oxi oxidized our carboxylate to CO2. So we notice that we have an oxidation reaction and whenever we have an oxidation reaction, we know that we need to look for the um, accompanying reduction. And sure enough, we see the formation of our first reduced coenzyme. Okay. Now, from alpha ketoglutarate, what happens to change it into succinyl CoA? So let's compare these two molecules to look for changes. And sure enough, if we'll notice that we have the loss of another CO2 molecule. So we have another oxidation, and that's combined with the reduction of another coenzyme. So another oxidation reduction reaction. Okay, in step five, we have succinyl CoA. Notice that we're going to produce coenzyme A, GTP, and succinate. So let's start looking for differences. So as we start at the top, right, carboxylate, CH2, CH2, aha, right? So what do we see? We see that there is something, this is breaking off. And so notice, right, that we're basically, um, we're taking a large molecule and we're breaking it apart into two small molecules. And energy is produced. So here's some energy production. So this is the opposite of what we normally think of a ligase enzyme, right? So we think of ligase enzymes as bringing together and using energy to bring together. Here, we've broken the molecule apart and produced energy. So here, it's um, anab um, well, it's no, it's catabolic still. Okay. Now we have the succinate. Let's look and see what happens here as we as it is trans um, transformed into fumarate. So we compare and contrast 
you see the carboxylates. And oh, look, there's the two carbons. This one's very obvious. We notice that we have, right, it's saturated to unsaturated. So what did we have here? We had a loss of hydrogen, right? So a loss of hydrogen, right, is oxidation. Spelling error. Oxidation. Okay, there we are. Alrighty, so our substrate has been oxidized, and lo and behold, we have produced another um, reduced coenzyme, FADH2. Alrighty, so we've produced another, another um, reduced coenzyme, so another oxidation reduction reaction. And now as we look at um, step seven, we would look at fumarate to um, malate, and we have the double bond, and we notice that we're bringing in the water, and we can see that water is adding across the double bond. And so the water has added to the molecule, so this would be an addition reaction catalyzed by a lyase enzyme. And then in our final step, we have the malate, and we notice that here, this secondary alcohol, right, is oxidized to a ketone. So we have another oxidation, and producing our last coenzyme through the reduction reaction. And then this is considered, right, we call it the citric acid cycle because notice that the product of our eighth step, oxaloacetate, is the substrate of the first step as the cycle begins. And so the acetyl-CoA keeps feeding in two carbon chunks, and then um, we go through a series of reactions. I think it's also interesting to note that the two carbons that are introduced by acetyl-CoA are not the same carbons that are released as um, CO2. And then to keep in mind the big picture, right, these coenzymes that have been produced, which we can think of as our energy currency, all the way up, all the way, right, so every place you see a reduced coenzyme, think of an energy source, right? And so all of these reduced coenzymes then, we will see in the next tutorial, go um, to the electron transport chain um, with oxidative phosphorylation. But before we move on, um, let's take some time to answer a few questions to make sure that we're really understanding the finer details of the citric acid cycle. All right, so you'll want to be looking at the citric acid cycle while you answer these questions. So this would be a great time to pause the, the, the video and answer these yourself, and then we can compare answers. All righty. So looking at the citric acid cycle, what is the substrate of step four? Well, it's alpha keto glutarate. And what was the product of step three? Alpha keto glutarate, right? That's why we call that's why it's called a cycle, right? Okay, now in each turn of the citric acid cycle, two molecules of CO2 are released. In which step are they released? I think this is a pretty straightforward one. Steps three and four. Okay. In which step of the citric acid cycle do two carbons enter? I think that one's pretty straightforward too, but you can double check your cycle if you're not convinced, and that's, that's a one. Kind of got pretty European there on that one. All righty. Um, which steps require the oxidoreductase enzyme? Right? And those are easy to spot right? Look for the reduced coenzymes. So look for NADH 
10FADH2 formation. Right? So if we look back, we'll see steps 3, 4, 6, and 8. Okay. Which of the steps require a lyase enzyme? Right? So remember, lyase enzymes, it's water, right, plus a carbon-carbon double bond, right, or a carbon-oxygen double bond. So for citric acid cycle, we're here, and you'll notice that that is step seven. Which steps require a transferase enzyme? So notice that's, the, that's step one. Right, that's how we, the, the two carbons enter. Um, oops. Right, enter the citric acid cycle, right, by the acyl group transfer. Okay, which of the steps require a ligase enzyme? This one can feel a little tricky because none of the steps show that we need ATP. So this one you have to remember to think, um, think about the reverse nature of enzymes, right? So enzymes catalyze both the forward and reverse reaction. So if we look at step five, right, we see that it's like a reverse ligase. We took one large, broke it into two small compounds, and GTP was released as the energy source. So it was like a reverse ligase. So that would be step five. And then um, lastly, let's, if we look at step two, why is it needed? And what subsequent step would not be possible without step two? So if we look back at our cycle, we notice that step two, right, is an isomerase reaction, all right? We go from a tertiary alcohol to a secondary alcohol. And the reason for this is remember that tertiary alcohols, right, cannot be easily oxidized. So for our class, we can just say they're not oxidized. But a secondary alcohol can be oxidized. So if you focus on the, the carbon that becomes the secondary carbon and you look through the pathways, what you'll notice is um, in step eight, right? Step eight would not be possible, right? Step eight needs step two because in step eight, we oxidize that, whoops, we oxidize that secondary alcohol. So step two was well in advance of step eight, but it was setting it up to create the cyclic nature of the citric acid cycle. All righty. So that concludes our tutorial on the citric acid cycle. We've done a bit of review here and practice to reinforce our understanding, but it'd be a good idea to work through a few more homework problems so you're feeling solid on this important um, biochemical pathway.